the, the opening, you know? It says stylized scream. You know, setting the, the scene. This horror thing is about to happen. And I've got them kind of like yodeling here. Um, the first character we meet is Aquanetta. She's wrapped in gauze. There were layers of information and layers of emotion that are going on in this piece. Even taking the basic facts of Aquanetta's life. She came to New York at a young age. Because she was so stunning, she started modeling. You know, comes from an Indian reservation. Her agent immediately says, this isn't gonna work. And they change her identity. I think it was Walter Winchell who dubbed her the Venezuelan volcano. So all of a sudden she's Hispanic, which is acceptable and exotic in the 1940s. You know, she spoke with a fake Spanish accent. Go away! Totally crazy, you know, and then all of a sudden she's signed to a movie contract. She, you know, usually played the exotic and would wear some sort of skimpy costume, and there's lots of... <gasps> Her public life is all assumed. We decided to focus on captive wild woman. We took the one scene in which this mad scientist turns an ape into a woman. As sort of our template, you get to know each character. There's the mad scientist. In the film, he's played by John Carradine. He basically lived on the movie lot. You know, he went from movie to movie. And so we imagined him sort of coming onto the who set, thinking, today? okay, who am I playing today? Oh yeah, I'm a mad scientist, oh, okay. And then sort of getting into his role. This is the ape and her song. When I researched this character, it turned out that the actor who played the gorilla was someone who, that's all they did, is they played weird animals in sci-fi B-movie. The ape sings, because I'm inside this costume, um, you can't tell if I'm good or bad. You can't tell if I'm black or white. Would it surprise you if I were a woman? And in fact, the ape in, in our opera is played by a woman. She's got the highest voice in the cast. And there's the director who's there telling everyone how to act. The aria that the director sings was actually taken from an interview with him. The medium is black and white. Movies are made with shadows and light. Here's the, the brainy woman. This person who's only wanted for her brain. And she sings about how she wishes she was the ingenue, she wishes she was the bathing beauty, you know, any other incarnation of femininity. But instead, all she's wanted for is her brain. Please don't take my brain. And that leads us to the first piece, you know, that's going to be performed. We've met all these five um, individually, and then they come together. There's a five-part canon, if you like, they're all singing the same melodic material, the same line, but uh, rhythmically displaced. Riffing on this line in the celluloid world, once you are cast or miscast, you are that forever. In the that was something Aquanetta said. Like She really wanted better parts, and she kept being cast as this exotic. She also, you know, cast herself. Whoever she was, you know, in 1948, no one was ready for it. That's basically the theme there, and that doesn't change. You see all these black lines here in the score. They're just the strings sliding, um, doing glissandos, almost sci-fi, experimental. And then the last piece is Aquanetta, and everybody joins her. But it's kind of a summation, let's say, of, of where we are so far. She comes out and she sings, I am your beautiful monster, lovely and shy. I can stop a lion in its tracks. You know, the, the ape and the brainy woman, you know, come in and join her. They're yodeling and screaming. And then the director comes out. You know, he says, I know you want everything to be clear and simple as black and white. One extreme or the other. I know you want The transition of Aquanetta in the film, it's the fair so woman, you know, turning black, black woman white. to bees. The I opera is really about the gray areas, who we present versus who we hide, the layers between one and the other.